Welcome to Annette on Life, Liberty, and Happiness, a podcast where we talk about the Constitution, politics, history, and pretty much anything else I want to talk about. You can find this podcast on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and on YouTube. And today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. Um, It's in the other category again. And um, I'm going to be announcing a contest to go along with the content today. And I am joined by my good friend and outdoorsy dude, Nate Audison again. Hi, Nate. How you doing? So, um, outdoorsy dude, could that be your new nickname? I guess. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna do a 72 hour kit. I was gonna say on a shoestring, but it's a little bit more than a shoestring, so maybe I'll say on a budget. Um, yeah, bug out bags on a budget. There you go, well, that's a lot there. of bees. That's kind of alliterative, I like it. So bug out bag on a budget. Say that five times faster. Anyway, um, and so what's going to be a little bit different about this time is that you're going to show us, you're going to walk us through all the, everything you put together, how much it cost, where you got it from, or show us that you made it or whatever. And yeah. then um, I'm running a contest. And this was your idea. I want to give you kudos for this. <laughs> if you're just listening to this, you need to go to YouTube and look it up. Um, this is Annette Talks. Go to youtube.com, type in Annette Talks, and this will be episode, I think, 82, I'm guessing. Probably going to call it Bug Out Bag on a Budget. <laughs> but anyway, um, and you'll want to see what we're showing you. But the contest is going to be that once this Bug Out Bag is all put together, I'm going to um, give it away, or Nate's actually going to be kind enough to send it. Nate's been such a nice dude and coming up with my outdoorsy friend over there, coming up with this idea of sending this to a random YouTube subscriber. And so right now I have around 650 subscribers on my channel. I'm aiming for a thousand, but I think it's going to take a little while to get there. So what I decided is that I, when it gets to 800, I'm going to, maybe I'll have one of my girls go and like randomly just point to a name, (laughs) but anyone out of that 800 can win this bug out bag and Nate's going to send it to you. And so what I want you to do, if you're a listener, if you're not already subscribed on YouTube is to go there, subscribe, um, and also share this episode with friends so that they can subscribe so that we can get to 800 sooner. Then, like I said, once we get to 800, I will randomly pick someone. It could be my first listener. It could be my, I mean, subscriber, my last one. I don't know. Uh, I'm going to have to find a way to just randomly pick someone. I think we can find a way to randomly computer generate a name. Oh, you think so? Well, I'm not an expert on stuff like this, but I think okay. there are people who do that. Yeah, yeah. We'll find a way. But I, I'm not going to pick anyone. Um, it, it'll be random. So the idea here, folks, is to get my subscribers up to 800 on YouTube. So even if you're already subscribed on one of the podcast um, platforms, go ahead and subscribe on YouTube as well. So again, go to youtube.com and um, type in Annette Talks and you'll see my podcast page come up. So without further ado, um, Nate has put together a bug out bag or 72 hour kit, however you want to look at it. And he's going to show us um, everything that he put together and how much it cost and where it came from. And you said the total was around $96 or something that you spent on it? Yeah, when I added it all up, it was $96.20 is about what I spent. All right. You know, you we talked about last time when we did a bug out bag thing uh, that some people were concerned about what it cost. And you brought up a couple of good points. You said, well, if I've got kids, that's a lot of money to shell out at once. And I thought, well, let's see if we can do this on a budget. How cheap can we do it? Now, I will tell you that uh, we cut some corners in some ways and we didn't in some others. Uh, But this is about as cheap as I think you can do this um, without doing a lot of work on this yourself. Uh, Some of this you'll have to still do on yourself, but this is a, this is a good place to start in, in the budget medium. Right? And at least it gives them a, a lot of ideas. I mean, even if they only take some of the ideas and, it, you know, some people probably have some stuff already lying around the house um, that you're going to put into this bag that they can use. Um, or they may have, uh, I, I was telling you before we started recording that I went to the garage sale, I went to a garage sale up the street the other day and found, randomly found 
this beautiful quilt with horses all over it that my daughter happens to love quilts and horses and I got it for three dollars and you know something that you usually spend yeah. I spent forty nine dollars on a quilt at Target the other day now I'm gonna kick myself because I could have gotten another I could have just picked up a second quilt for, for for three bucks but if you go to garage sales and you go to Goodwill you can often find these things at a fraction of what you can get them on online so even if you only use some of Nate's ideas and you find other ones other ways then you, that's another way to save some money or maybe spend something on something else like Nate's got a handmade um, uh, backpack for lack of a better term that you may not no. want to have to put together but you may be able to pick up a backpack at Goodwill for five bucks or ten bucks so um, it this is just a good a good place to start as far as ideas for putting together a bargain what did we call it budget <laughs> bug out bag on a budget uh, uh, yeah bug out bag on a budget yeah or bargain basement <laughs> yeah bag i don't know bargain yeah. basement, bug out bag all right so show us what you've got there okay so we always want to stay with the five c's like we talked about in the last one so you need your combustion containers cutting tools and cover etc cetera, etc cetera. Uh, so the the very first thing I, I always want, um, your, your most important thing in your bag is going to be your knife. It's going to be the most important tool that you have um, for a lot of reasons. But knives are expensive. Um, in the last, uh, in the last uh, episode, we talked about how this is the one place where you really want to try to avoid economizing. But you can. And here's how I did it. So I bought an old hickory knife just an old hickory butcher knife it, it, it initially had a five inch blade and it was it it was shaped a little different but what i did is i i just cut this with the grinder and and i reshaped the profile here and here a little bit and and i sharp well i say sharpened i squared up the the very top right here mm -hmm. and i did that so that when you uh when you want to strike a light with it it would it would be sharp enough to do that like it's right. supposed to yeah so that way you've got your combustion and your cutting tool um and i just saw more spark right now than i did on my last date oh no <laughs> you should start mood. dating gunsmiths there's <laughs> it's memorial day i'm in a mood today all right keep going all right well anyway uh, this knife cost me about five dollars and fifty cents and and i reshaped that it's just an old hickory now the thing is, you can do this with just about any butcher knife that you find. You go to a garage sale, pick one up for a couple of dollars, just reshape it so that it works better. Or if you can't reshape it, use it the way it is. And where did Some you get that those... one? Where did you buy that one? Oh, sorry. I, I bought this one off of Amazon. Okay. So it was a hickory. Um, you said it was a hickory knife? It's an old hickory. Old hickory. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just, just um, here, let me. Old hickory, just like that. Oh, okay. And I'm going to include a list. Um, I'm going to make a PDF out of every all the information that you're hearing today, and I will include it in the show notes on YouTube. Um, no. Oh, sorry. I've got or, this. I'm sorry. If I can't, I'm trying to remember if I can include an actual PDF on YouTube. Uh, I'll find a way. If if not, I'll put it on my talks.com website. So anyway, go on. Yeah. Uh, okay. So if you can't get one that's shaped like that, don't don't let the shape slow you down. You can sometimes get other butcher knives that are shaped like this, other things like that. Just what you need is a knife between um, three and a half inches and five inches, even six. Just make sure that it can hold a good edge and then there you go. You've got your cutting tools. And like I said, that one cost me $5.50. The next thing that I bought for this is is something I, I didn't really scrimp on too much. This is a water filter. Now, so your mini water filtration system for those that are just right. listening. And, uh -huh. and I bought this at um, Academy Sports and Outdoors. Okay. But I think you can get these at Amazon or whatever. This one, uh, I think that I ended up paying nineteen ninety five plus tax for this. Mm -hmm. uh, I like this one because it has a, a little fold-up bottle and it has a syringe to pull. Like if you're if you've found a puddle and that's the only water you can find, you can put that little syringe in there and you can bring all the water out of the puddle. And that's then you awesome. can put it in the little bag and then squeeze it through the filter. Um, oh, that's cool. 
Exactly. And, and, and that's the reason why I bought this one. It wasn't expensive. I mean, $20 is a cheap water filter. It is. Um, and there are better water filters out there than this, but this one's really good. It's a great value for the money and you've got to have water. Mm -hmm. So it, I don't know where you live. You might have plenty of clean water or water that you can easily boil, but it's a good idea to have a filter like that in your, in your bug out bag. Um, the next thing that I bought that was a really good deal is I was at Harbor Freight and they had some really nice little lamps. These were $3.50. Nice. And That's bright. You can hang them up. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, they're a little bigger than I, I'd like to carry. But here again, we're trying to do this on a budget. So what's that called? Uh, that it's a lamp. I mean, is there a brand or anything in case people, for people that can't oh. see what we're looking at here? Uh, it says Luminar Outdoor. Um, Right there. Okay, Luminar Outdoor, and it's a lantern, basically, or a lamp. And you got it at Harbor Freight. I did. And, and how I, much and was I liked that, you it. said? Do what? How much was that? Well, when I bought it, it was $3.50. Oh, that's that's a deal. Oh, no. I've got it down that I, I paid six twenty five dollars for it. So maybe it was six twenty five. dollars That's still good. Uh, okay. But it was they, they had them on sale, but I, I bet you that sometimes you can get them cheaper. Maybe they're more expensive expensive sometimes i don't know but that's what i paid for it this time all right and it came with the batteries so oh, nice. I was, yeah so i bought that lamp to go in there um another thing that i bought um is uh you can take your forks and spoons from your drawer so you don't have to pay for it. right but they're steel so they're heavy now in a lot of ways that's okay because if things get difficult, you can use that steel for other stuff, mm. but these don't weigh anything and they cost, it's a three piece set at Academy and I think it cost me $2.50. Oh yeah. Okay. I was thinking so, you could, you if you had to stab someone maybe with that knife, <laughs> but then I realized we already have a knife. Of course you could yeah, always give it to one of them. Oh, it's not, it's not a good stab. <laughs> As a matter of fact, if it were up to me, I'd only take these two, but they came in a set of three. All right. So you can have some utensils anyway. And you do you do need a fork and a, and a spoon. Now, the truth is you don't have to buy those. Um, you can either make them in the field or you can easily make chopsticks with a couple of uh, sticks if you can use chopsticks. But it's kind of nice to have those, especially if you're in a hurry. Yeah. Um, so I, I got those and... The, oh, paracord. So you, you always need cordage. All right. So this is just some. Okay, so it says 550 paracord. Uh, what's it say underneath that? Course, uh, maybe that's a. Um, yeah, it, yeah, I don't know what it says underneath there, but this is just. paracord. This is just paracord. I like paracord. Some people prefer other stuff to paracord. I like paracord because it's everywhere you can get it. Um, when I bought this, I paid six ninety five dollars for it. Sometimes it's a little more expensive. Sometimes it's cheaper. I got this one at Academy, but you can get it other places. Uh, we talked about before how I bought some at my Hobby Lobby. Somebody said, well, you can't buy real paracord at Hobby Lobby, but the stuff that I got from Hobby Lobby was five fifty dollars paracord with the strands on the inside, just like it's supposed to be. So mm. I don't know what to tell you about that. You can get them at surplus stores wherever but get some cordage in your 72 hour kit like this get it however much it costs you you're just going to need it um let's see i've got um one of the things that i did just for this is i bought uh bought a lighter. lighter all right because we've got a thing to strike fires but one of the rules that you have is that the stuff that you absolutely have to have, you, you, you want at least two of them because mm -hmm. two is one and one is none because you can easily lose that. Now, the thing that's nice about little lighters like this is, is they work great. Mm -hmm. I mean, probably lit a fire with them. Um, they'll, they'll stop working at 32 degrees. Ah, I did not know that. So if you leave them outside and it's freezing, it's not gonna work in the morning. On the other hand, the nice thing is if you leave it outside and it doesn't work, you know it's freezing or below. Yeah. <laughs> good good point. That's good. Yeah. Now, um, a lot of people will wrap duct tape around these. And I would recommend that. I'd recommend wrapping a lot of duct tape around that. Um, I just haven't done it yet. 
But if you wrap a lot of duct tape around this, there's two things you can do with that. You always need duct tape. Mm -hmm. You can fix holes with it. If you cut yourself, you can use it for a Band-Aid. But the other thing that's really nice about it is if you get in a spot where all of your tinder is wet and you can't light a fire, take some of that duct tape up and wad it up and it'll light. Really? And it, yes, it'll light really well and it'll burn really slow and it'll it'll let your some of your uh, moist tinder dry while it's burning. Awesome. And so... Get a lot of duct tape and wrap it around there because it really comes in handy and it'll save your life in a Jack London light of fire situation. Sweet. You know, you know, yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna pretend you didn't use the M word in there. What word? <laughs> there's a there's a word that starts with the M to describe things that are a little bit wet that a lot of us oh. we don't oh, really like. Oh, you don't that. like the M word. <laughs> we were just talking about it last night. Anyway, go on. I I we oh, just learned okay. a new way to use duct tape that I didn't know, which is awesome. Oh yeah, and just wrap it around there. Some people will take these and they'll wrap a lot of duct tape around them. And then after that, they'll wrap it with paracord so that they've got extra paracord. Okay, I get that. I like a lot of extra paracord, but I think when it's the size of a fist, it's really silly because then you don't like it in your pocket anymore. And you want to keep this in your pocket, your pocket on your person so it's not at 32 degrees if it's freezing and it's always on your body. Yeah, so. that's what I was thinking too. That was my first thought was, well, I would put that right in my pocket. So, that's right. Yeah. And, it, you know, the duct tape's there. It'll stay on. Now, mm -hmm. the last time we talked a little bit about containers for cooking. And I had a really cute little boil out pot from Stanley. I really liked that. I wanted to find another one to put in here, even though it usually costs about $20. I couldn't find it. I don't know if because of COVID, Stanley just stopped making stuff or everybody croaked or I, I got no idea, but I couldn't <laughs> find one anywhere, which is too bad. So instead I got this little foldable skillet pot. Now, this is pretty good. It's not perfect for boiling water, but you can boil water if you had to, but you can cook um, bannocks in it or you know, if you've got some eggs mm -hmm. uh, or pancakes or whatever you're gonna make. Anyway, uh, you can cook your squirrel if you got a squirrel you trapped it and you're going to eat it because you're starving <laughs> or your grits or whatever you're whatever you're using we have a lot of uh, rabbits in our neighborhood i often think that if things went south i'd have to start catching some of the rabbits be careful because rabbits are mean oh they're vicious oh. honestly you pick one up it'll claw you it'll oh. just oh. yeah right. and they might even bite ducks? you what about, we've got ducks down at the pond so well yeah same, kind of the same with ducks. Shoot the rabbit and then just and then just get it. You oh, know. Okay. so shoot them first, all right. Shoot the rabbit first. But I don't know about Colorado here in the south. You have to shoot them after the freeze. Uh, they say they've got something called rabbit fever. I got no idea what that is. Oh. But it's a little like you, you're not supposed to eat mussels unless there's a month with R. You know, it's a little <laughs> it's, it's a little rule like that. Don't shoot rabbits and eat them until after the freeze and then... In the summer, you just don't. You you can find something else to eat. Squash, yes. I don't know. Okra, whatever we eat down right. here. Grits, yeah. Uh, but you, I got this pan. It's eleven dollars. This is the kind of thing that that you can add. Now, um, I I debated this because I have a wee tiny little cast iron skillet, um, and um, it's Where'd probably pan? where'd you get that pan from? Oh, Academy. Okay. Academy Sports and Outdoors, and it was eleven dollars and fifty cents or something. I don't know, uh, but uh, I had a, or I still have a little tiny cast iron pan that's about six inches in diameter that I bought from uh, H E B, and I, I I I didn't show that because I don't want to put that in this kit for the guy because that's my pan, right. but you can find sometimes you can find little six inch cast iron pans. They're great. Mm -hmm. Because you can put those right on the coals. This one, you'll have to kind of put it on a rock by the fire. Put a, a, a good cast iron pan, you can do that. Now, the problem with the good cast iron pan is it's heavy. Right. And all the heavy in your bug out bag is something that you, you know, I mean, that means right. if it's heavy, you're going to have to take something else out. Right. So the cast iron's great. Like, let's say there's three or four of you, mm -hmm. one of you a cast iron pan and then somebody else can carry the extra ammo for your 22 right. kind of thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So uh, that's that's the other reason why I didn't have the cast iron pan is because it's just more weight. I don't know. Yeah. 
Um, let's see. What am I? Oh, containers. Okay. Now I got this one for this particular bug out bag. This is uh, from FN Fabric National. Uh, they're one of our uh, clients where I work, and they sent us some sample water bottles. But you can probably find another sample water bottle like this, uh, you know, or um, I had a friend who bought one at the zoo for like $3.50. Yeah, you can probably get them at Goodwill. I mean, or you probably have something around your house like that too, because we were talking before how water bottles are like really the thing right now for kids. Like they, yeah. all of my kids have these ridiculously expensive water bottles. Like One of the things I like about this one though is it, if you can get them that are stainless steel, it's the best. Um, but if you do aluminum, that's okay too. So the thing that's nice about this is, okay, so if you take some of that paracord, right, and you and you and you tie a twig onto it, right, that's about um, about this long, right? Tie the twig onto it. Mm -hmm. uh, then you can drop that twig into here and turn it sideways, and you got the paracord hanging off. Then you can suspend this above your fire and boil your water. My water, right? Yeah. And so, if you if you want to make a little bit of um, dandelion root tea, oh. this is and this stuff. This is a red chai. You can get this at H E B. This is really good. Nice. Uh, but you can get a little bit of that. That'll keep you warm. I always I always keep this stuff in my bug out bag because uh -huh. this is a herb tea but i've got asthma and this stuff will stop an asthma attack huh now is, any of, that, is any of that going in your 72 hour kit or are you just showing that to us yeah it, it's some of that's going in the 72 hour oh, kit okay. baggy like this there's uh there's a, a little bit of each now what i usually put in there is a bunch of cubes of sugar too mm -hmm. i'm not going to put that in there in case uh ants Oh right. Get in, get it get at it in the mail. I don't want that to happen to whoever we send this to. Right. So I'm not going to do that. But uh, but yeah, I, I'm going to put three or four different uh, types of herb tea. Like uh, I like I, I really like this one at night. Yes. And uh, it has uh, it has a little passion flower in it. Um, it's so you've got like yeah, okay. So you've got some uh, variety of herbal teas in there, basically. Right, and all of those are kind of nice to have in your seventy-two hour kit because, or your bug out bag. Because here's the thing, right? You've uh, you've just left home under difficult circumstances, and you're upset, and things are difficult. It's really nice to have a nice warming cup of tea. I don't care how British that sounds. It's still. <laughs> And some of those are just convenient to have, uh, and and they work well. So it's it's nice because in, in a way it's um, medicine, but it's also calming to your spirit. And you'll probably need that in your bug out pack. Uh, one of the things that I never put on a list that I think everybody should always do is find a nice novel that you've read before that you like and put it in there because it'll be comforting to read the sun also rises again or the life of pi or i don't know what you know whatever you like to read just because there'll be some time probably that you'll have down and you'll be glad that you got that yeah. um Heck yeah the last time i talked a little bit about um having a bandana so i've got a bandana in here now this one's it's a promotional bandana from harley davidson so it, it didn't cost anything, mm -hmm. but it's good and big. It, uh, it's a little or stretchier than I like it, but it'll it'll do all the things you need to do for your bandana. You can <laughs> get through it. You know, you can put it over your head for your hat. <laughs> I can tie that up so it looks cool. But sorry, go ahead. What I was just making a joke. I said it's a brooch. It's a pterodactyl. Airplane. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> so that's that's what I've got for that now. Um, after that, uh, I bought two wool blankets from Harbor Freight. Now, here's the nice thing about that. If you're watching this right now, hurry, because they're on sale. They're for, let's see, what did I pay? Six ninety-five dollars a piece, six seventy-five dollars a piece. It was something like that. It was really cheap. They're not 
the best wool blankets in the world. They're itchy. <laughs> and they're not 100% wool. And they're not what I would pick if I could say, well, this is the blanket I'm going to take with me. On the other hand, uh, if I were doing this on a budget, I would rather have two Harbor Freight blankets uh, than um, cotton uh, duvet from off my bed or whatever. Right. Uh, because you've got all the benefits of a wool blanket and it was cheap. So the, I bought two of those <coughs> because they're a little smaller than, than, than the queen size blankets that I normally tell people to buy. Um, and they're a little thinner, but they still really will do the job. And they're cheap. So if you are out there and you're like, Nate, I've got to get a, a 72 hour kit and I can't afford to buy a $600 Hudson Bay blanket right now. And I'm like, yeah, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But, uh, but you can get a Harbor Freight blanket. Now, one of the things we talked a little bit about earlier that's nice about having a wool blanket is and I know this looks silly, but bear with me. If you don't, if they, just listening, he's wrapping it around himself like we do when we're sick and we put a blanket around our... Right. Our so put this around you and then and then move it a little bit to your right side. Um, and then one of the things that I'm going to put in there, I, I made this. Um, and if you're not watching, it looks like a, like a really, like a big metal ring with a needle through it. Yeah, it's, it's, it, that's exactly right. It looks like a big metal ring with a needle through it. And then there, there's a wee little hole over here on the side where you can get this back and forth on it. And it's got a little hinge here, right? This is called a penangular brooch. Now, uh, people have used these for 2,000 years. Um, some people don't call them penangular brooches. Some people call them a blanket pen. And what you can do with that is you got your, your, your wool blanket and you take it lengthwise across you so that you can get both ends and then, then move it a little bit longer to your left side and then gather it up right about here and punch that pen through both pieces of blanket and run that ring right through there like that. And then your bull blanket is it suddenly- a cape. <laughs> it's your cape, just like uh, Mel Gibson in Die Hard, or not Die Hard, what was it, Braveheart. Right. You know, or, or any of those other cool shows that you've watched and you've seen them with the blanket, you know, and then they've got their little sword, or with the cape, and they've got their yeah. sword hand over here, and you're all like, oh, that's so cool. Yeah. This is how they do it. And mm -hmm. all you got to do, like, I, I just took some carbon steel, uh, and, I, and I just bent it into a ring, and, but uh, if you if you're not handy or you don't have the tools or you're like, oh my gosh, nay, good grief. <laughs> Just look up blanket pen or a penangular brooch and you'll get all kinds of medieval sites that will pop up fancy ones or plain ones. Um, do a little archaeological digging because peasants wore them all the time. So, oh, wait, we didn't have any in the United States. But, but um, there you go. Now, the nice thing about having a penangular brooch or a blanket pen is that you can also use this as an awl. So anything that you need to sew that's leather, or if you need to punch another hole in your belt loop because you got skinny because you're out there in the wilderness and you're burning a lot of calories and you don't have enough to get it back, well, punch another hole with this. That's what it's for. So we're going to drop that into that 72-hour uh, kit. Um, even if it's not fancy, it works great. Maybe even if you can find a ginormous safety pin, um, it could work. Well, and you know it's it's funny because um, before there were penangular penangular brooches, the Romans used something that looked like a giant safety pin. Right. And so you you do find that in a lot of uh, Roman archaeological digs, particularly Romano Britain ones, because they were they were doing that. Now, what have I forgot here? Um, what I what I don't have to show you is that I bought a blue tarp for this, but it's just an ordinary everyday blue tarp that you can get at um, at any of your hardware stores, your Lowe's, your Home Depot, and, and they're, they run about $10. They're usually between $8 and $10. Now, if you're really worried about the, the fact that you're using a plastic tarp, the other thing that you can do, because, you know, people have not had plastic tarps for forever, so back in the frontier days, they used to waterproof um, cotton sheeting. 
uh, or canvas. So that you can take, um, let's say that you've got an old bed sheet. Let's say uh, you wore out the bottom sheet and the top sheet for your queen size bed is still in perfectly good shape. Take that bed sheet and, and, and then take a mixture of boiled linseed oil and... Um, Mineral spirits. Thanks. Mineral spirits. I was like, now nah, I've forgotten the I word. I wrote it and, down because I've never heard that before. So. <laughs> yeah, mineral spirits. And mineral spirits is a thinner and it'll cut your linseed oil. So make it, you know, put, uh, put about a cup of linseed oil and a cup of mineral spirits into a five gallon bucket, mix it up real good, drop that sheet in there and, and it'll soak it all up. It may need some more. You may need to put two cups of each in there. Uh, get that sheet, soak it all up, wring it out and then hang it out in your backyard or on your back porch to dry. Don't hang it indoors because the fumes will be flammable, but it'll be fine outside. So then hang that out to dry. When that dries, you'll have a relatively waterproof tarp. Um, and you didn't have to throw away the bed sheet. You got to use it. And, and so you can do that if you don't want to, to buy a tarp from Lowe's. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and that'll give you a cover. You can make it into a lean-to or um, into a small A-frame. There's a bunch of different ways you can take a tarp like that and make it into a good shelter. Um, and so then you've, you've got a tarp. But in this one, I'll put that little blue tarp. Um, the other thing that I've got in there is, um, this is just a canvas drop cloth. And I kind of wish you could see it all laid out because it's, it's a pretty good size. Um, it's a little bit, wider than your blankets and a little bit longer, which is the way that you want it. Uh, sometime when you were growing up, you probably watched some cowboy movies mm -hmm. and on the back of their horse, they had a bedroll. Mm -hmm. All that bedroll really was, was a piece of canvas like this with the wool blanket, like the one we've got rolled up into it. And that's what they used to do. And uh, you, can, uh, you can lay this out as a, as a ground cloth and then put your wool blanket over it, fold it over. You can pin it up one side for a sleeping bag, or you can watch some videos on YouTube called Wool Blanket Tricks, and it'll tell you how to double up that and get warmer in your wool blanket. Uh, but but we're going to put that in the, this kit as, a, as an extra. It's, what it is is it's a painter's drop cloth. I forgot to mention that. And I got this at Lowe's for $3.50, when you get it, you got to wash it because uh, at first it's it's about a third bigger and it's uh, it's a mess. It's not usable as a as a ground cloth because it's too coarsely woven. But when you wash it, it'll shrink right down a little bit. It's it's absolutely perfect for that. Right. Um, and then your your blanket isn't on the ground; it's not absorbing the moisture. Uh, you can you can put that up for a shelter in the sun, whatever you want to use it for. Um, but, only other thing, okay, this is a, a, a back saw. I hate putting these saws this size into my uh, kits because these are big and they're bulky. Mm -hmm. uh, this one came from Harbor Freight and I'm trying to remember what I paid for it. It, it wasn't very much. It was, uh, oh, I wrote it down here someplace. We'll put it in there, but it, it, it cost me next to nothing. It was like $8 or something. Uh -huh. um, I'm probably not going to put this in the bug out bag, the budget bug out bag for one, for a couple of reasons. One, I, I've got to ship this and this will make the, the uh, uh, box a lot bigger than it really needs to be. Right. And two, what I think I'll, I'll do for this is I'll, I'll make one of these that's oh. collapsible. Oh, nice. Uh, but you, you can buy a, do what? I said nice. Yeah, you can buy a blade for these. Oh, thanks. You can, you can buy a blade for these and then make a, a back saw frame that's uh, sort of eye-shaped. And uh, and that's what I'll do. I'll, I'll get a, a blade like this for this kit before I send it, and, and I'll make a back saw. Um, it's, it's actually really easy to make because you just need a post here and a post here and a kind of like a... a a beam in the middle and then a, a cord around here to tighten it up. Hmm. That makes sense. Well, for people like anyway, you, it, it'll work handy. just like. Well, people like you are super handy. Stuff like that's really simple. But for people like me, it's like what? <laughs> I, I envy. Who well, and, and that's that's. 
Oh, thanks. No, uh, well, and that's one of the reasons why I, I've got this is because it's easy to take a look at this and say, okay, that's a cheap saw. Mm -hmm. you, you need a saw or a hatchet. And I like I like folding saws. I particularly like gomboys, uh, but they're so expensive that they don't belong in your budget bag. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Southern uh, SOG, I don't remember exactly what that stands for. It's a knife company. They make a pretty decent little folding saw that should cost about 19 bucks. Mm. And I wanted to put one of those in this, but uh, I went to three academies and for some reason, like the little Coleman cooking thing, they didn't have them. Yeah. I don't know why they're out, but they are. So maybe everybody out there is putting together bug out bags right now. I, I don't know. Um, the, the SOG one is the, it's a little less expensive. It's the one that I got first and by three or four campouts, it, it was dull. Mm -hmm. Um, but it worked. I mean, if you did a 72 hour kit and you put it in there, um, as long as it was not two months, you were trying to get that saw to work for you, it would have been okay. Right. Uh, this will last you longer, um, and it'll be handy, but it's big. The, the the kit that I'll make for this will last you longer. Uh, you'll just have to put it together because it'll be takedown, so it'll fit in the pa backpack. And that does um, remind me because we are we need to get to that. So we talked about buying a backpack, right? Well, and you can. You can totally do that, um, uh, particularly if you go to a Goodwill around a college someplace. I'll bet you there's a lot of good Gen Sport packs. Right. But what, what I've done for this is I've made what they call a Roycroft frame and I've taken um, three sticks and I've um, lashed them together in the shape of a triangle and I've added a little pipe insulation right here where this rests on your back so it'll be a little more comfortable. And then I've got some webbing from Hobby Lobby. It cost me about $3.50 and I've tied that into straps and, and then I've got one as a a buckle so that it'll go around your waist here it's kind of hard to see oh, that on this yeah. i'm that's pretty, pretty uh, fancy now the, for homemade oh thanks yeah well um the roycroft backpack is real popular with bush crafters and uh like i've put little toggles on here so that you can you can tie stuff onto it with your paracord um, if you want to, or, oh yeah, when we talk about toggles, a toggle like this is what you can put through the, um, neck of your jar to hang it from the oh, fire. Right, to make yeah. it boil the water, right. Yeah, just do a little setup kind of like that, only longer. And then, uh, but what I did with this is, you know how we talked about waterproofing? Well, I've got, um, the pillowcase that you had with your sheets, um, and, I'll waterproof this and then I've got, I'll, uh, I'll lash it down. I've got some paracord here that I'll lash it to the frame with. And, and then you use this pillowcase as your bag for your backpack. And it looks and like it will be fairly comfortable and um, sturdy. It is. Um, Probably more uh, so than a, than a backpack, I'm just guessing. It, it'll be a lot more comfortable than a Jan Sport. It'll carry a lot more weight for a lot more distance, a lot a lot more comfortably. There's a lot of mores in that sentence, but uh, but, but it is. Uh, I read um, one guy talking about how he made a, a Roy Croft frame like this when he was in the woods. He used some hardwood sticks that he found because his backpack broke and he wanted to pack out. Um, so he, what he did is he took and he made that frame out of some oak that he found there. Uh, he lashed it together with some, uh, cotton string that he had and and then he wrapped everything up in his wool blanket and um packed out and he says it's 30 years and he still has that roy crop frame oh. and just in case, if you're watching and, and we talked about this book before bushcraft 101 they actually have the directions on how to make that that roy craft frame in that book so if you have that book that's where you can look it up to find so i you know if if you're getting serious about having um your 72 hour kit, you might want to go the extra mile and and buy this book. I think I paid ten dollars for it on Amazon. So I mean it wasn't maybe well it says $16.99 on the back. I don't remember paying that much, but it's a it's a good little handy book. 
it's a bargain at $16 because uh, there's recipes in there uh, and there's um, all kinds of instructions and techniques. And, and he talks about how to make a backpack frame like that and, and other expedient things. And the more you know, the less you have to carry. Awesome. All right, is that everything that goes in our, our bargain bug out bag? Yep, that's everything we've got in there. I'm gonna put a little bit of food in there, 72 hours worth of dry food. Uh, but I, we talked a little bit about maybe we consider doing um, food at a different episode yeah, sometime. Yeah, I think I'd like to do another episode. Um, and I don't know if this is something that you wanna do if I'll have to find someone else, but I wanted to actually talk about um, you know, maybe 72 hours of food and then maybe a week and then uh, maybe three months, that kind of thing, you know, and, yeah. and um, parse it out into different lengths of time that you need food storage or food, you know, it's whether you're bugging out or staying um, and what you rec what's recommended for each of those different time periods. We just don't have enough time on this episode to talk about much about food, but I, I'm, I'm glad you're throwing a little bit something in there um, just to get yeah, started. I just just real quick what, I, what I'm gonna throw in there is uh, this is one of the things that I'll throw in it's just some couscous from HEB I'll take it out of the box but I like this now uh, one of the reasons why I picked that is because uh, I was reading some histories of uh, caravans and I wondered what food they carried because you know they're going long distances and they don't have a lot of time to set up and take down camp and when I read that they all carried couscous, I was like, oh, perfect. So I'll put a little couscous in there. And like I said, I'll put some tea. Um, one of the things I'd recommend is uh, get yourself a, a little, Okay. It'll, this is just a little bottle. Mm -hmm. uh, I like it like this because it'll fit in your pack. Now I'm not going to put this in that one because it'll, it's heavy and who knows if it flies. Maybe yeah, concerning. But this is important because you need this to oil your knife. Um, yeah. Because if you have a if you have a knife like these that are not stainless steel, they're carbon steel. They'll rust if you don't oil them. Mm -hmm. But you don't want to oil them with WD forty and then and then split your apple with it because your apple will taste mm -hmm. terrible. Yeah, good point. Excellent. All right. So um, again, to everyone that's listening, if you want a, a crack at winning that uh, bargain bug out bag, or what do we call it? Beat? Bargain, bargain bug out bag. Bargain bug out bag. Um, budget bug out bag. Bar bargain. Oh bug yeah. Budget bug whatever out bag. Whatever you want to call it. Um, go and subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet. Go to YouTube and type in Annette Talks, and then and subscribe. Um, share it with your friends. Tell them to su subscribe so you can win this bug out bag. And um, what as, after I've chosen you. Um, I will contact you and get your mailing address from you, and then I'll have Nate send it to you. And um, you know it'll be really cool to maybe hear back from whoever wins what you know what you think about it, and um, and let me know. Yeah, go out and give this stuff a try and tell me how it works for you. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, Nate, thank you so much for putting all the time and effort and money into putting that together for us. And my um, pleasure. We're obviously going to be having you on again in the future to do some other episodes and, and maybe when you do an episode on how to make that um, frame um, or anything else of interest like that, uh, I'll link those to my episodes that you're on. So if you're listening, come back and check my YouTube channel occasionally and see if I've linked um, uh, Nate's video to this episode because if he does one in the future, I'll go back and link it later. But I will, when I post this, I will attach somehow a list of everything that we've just talked about, um, where Nate bought it and how much he paid for it. And that way, if you wanna go and start collecting this for yourself, if you don't win, if you sadly don't win the free one and you wanna start working on one yourself, you can use that list. I'll put it in the show notes um, on the podcast and I'll, I'll put it on the YouTube notes and on my uh, website, AnnetteTalks.com. So um, this has been great. Um, thank you again, Nate. Glad to. Um, thank you all for listening to Annette on Life, Liberty, and Happiness, where freedom lovers gather.